Reach for the speed, reach for the whistle, go where the rail may run. Theodore, he's a tugboat and a friendly tugboat too. A friendly tugboat too. Oh, Theodore, likes to do the things that friendly tugboats do. Reach for the words, reach for the story, follow the rainbow sun. Pushing and a pulling in a great big harbor, in a great big world, it's so much fun. So many brand new things to discover. Waking with the sun, gotta get the job done. Oh, Theodore and Emily, Voda, Hank and George, and the harbor master too. There should do it. I'm going to explain how the pulley system works for the overnight mail. Would you give me that mail sack, please? Harry, I'm sure your pulley system works, but I'm still going to have to spend the night here. Wait and see how it works before you decide. Now, we're going to pretend this bag is full of mail. Fat and heavy. Now, the midnight special is going to come roaring through. It's going to hold out its mail. And... By the Daybreak Express. Though all the work is done for you, you don't have to spend the night here. Are you really going to spend the night here, Stacy? Wow, that's neat. You never did that before. Where will you sleep? In my sleeping bag. <laughs> I keep telling you, Stacy, you don't have to spend the night. My pulling system will switch the mail for you. You don't have to be here. It's all automatic. What if the mail gets stuck in the middle? Oh, I know, I know it probably won't, but what if it does? I want Shining Time to be the most dependable station on the line. So, I'm going to stay. Well, if you're going to stay, I'll stay with you. I can't leave you here by yourself. Pajamas? Pajamas? No, I, I think I'll sleep in my clothes and then change in the morning. You get to sleep in your clothes? I still have to brush my teeth and wash my face. Yes, but you get to sleep in your clothes. <laughs> I better go find my sleeping bag. I'll see you kids later. One bright morning, Carla, the cool cabin cruiser, was cruising past Kaylee's Cove, just zigging and zagging along in her jazzy way. Hi, Carla, a little voice called. Carla slowed down and saw Dorothy, the small Dory, who lived in the cove. What are you doing? said Dorothy. I'm rocking over the waves and rolling over the whitecaps, answered Carla. Can you come and stay with me some night? said Dorothy. Dorothy was just crazy about cool Carla. Cool, said Carla, and then she had a better idea. I'll go invite Sigrid, too. We could have a sleepover, tonight. <coughs> Carla cruised off to find Sigrid. Dorothy was so excited, she began bobbing back and forth until well, she almost keeled over. Sigrid was delivering supplies to Owen, the giant oil rig who lived out on the ocean. Sigrid knew that tootie toot toot sound anywhere. Sure enough, it was Carla. Dorothy and I are having a sleepover at Kaylee's Cove tonight, called Carla. It was my idea. Are you coming? 
Sigrid thought about it for a moment. Well, I'll go if my friend Emily can go, she said. Cool! Emily's my friend too, smiled Carla. I'll go ask her. See you at eight and don't be late. Carla found Emily in the harbor, moving a ship with Theodore. We're having a sleepover at Kaylee's Cove tonight. And everyone's coming, and you can come too, said Carla, out of breath. If you're allowed, Carla added slyly, I guess she'll have to ask the dishwasher. He's not the dishwasher, Emily smiled. He's the dispatcher, and I'm sure you'll let me go. The sun was just beginning to sail over the edge of the ocean when Carla and Sigrid arrived at Kaylee's Cove. Of course, Dorothy was waiting for them. Just then, they heard a tugboat's whistle. Oh, cool, said Carla. Emily is allowed to come. What shall we do first, said Dorothy. Let's race around the cove, suggested Sigrid. She loved to race, and she usually won. Good idea, said Emily. But, but then I can't come, said Dorothy. You see, Dorothy didn't have an engine like the other boats. I can pull you, suggested Sigrid, who always wanted to be a tugboat anyway. Cool, let's go, shouted Carla. Sigrid attached a small rope to Dorothy, and everyone lined up to begin the race. Truro, the fishing trawler, who lived in the cove with Dorothy, blew his horn, and the boats took off. Carla and Emily quickly took the lead. They're getting ahead of us, shouted Dorothy. Go faster, Sigrid, go faster. Now, Sigrid could go much faster. She was afraid of going too fast with Dorothy behind her. Are you sure it's okay? She called the little Dory. I want to go fast, shouted Dorothy. The faster, the better. But as soon as Dorothy said that, she wasn't so sure. Secret poured on the power. And quickly caught up to Carla and Emily. Dorothy wobbled along behind Secret like a little toy boat on a rope. Can we slow down? She called. But you said go fast, shouted Sigrid, slowing down. But saying I want to go fast is, is different than going fast, said Dorothy, all out of breath. What's the matter? called Carla, looping back. Uh, maybe we should do something else, said Sigrid. We can go to Shipwreck Rock, suggested Dorothy. The little Dory had never been before. And she had always wanted to go, especially with the bigger boats. That's a good idea, said Emily. Then we're off to the rock, said Carla. The four buccaneers. Would you like to sleep here? I don't know. Do you think it would be scary? You mean like ghosts and stuff? No, I'm not afraid of ghosts. Are you afraid of ghosts? I'm I oh, I'm, uh, uh. Uh. Well, I found this in the lounge car on the express to Twiddly Junction. Some poor fellow must have forgotten it. Hello, you two. Gracious, you both look like you've seen a ghost. I knew it was Mr. Conductor. Uh, me too, Mr. Conductor. Who else? Of course it's me. Who did you think it was? Oh, I see. You saw that hat floating along and you thought, dearie me, spooky wookie. No, no. Uh, uh, uh. Well, it would scare the dickens out of me if I saw a hat floating around the room. Really? I'd be leaping in the air and screaming my head off. I was a little scared. Me too. Just a little? I was pretty scared. It was scary. I was about to scream. I was going to run for the door. Really? Well, you both certainly acted brave. 
You know what they always say, fuzzy things are hairy, but spooky things are scary. Which reminds me of a story, a scary joke that Percy played on Thomas. Come along and I'll tell you all about it. Every year on the date of the accident, it runs again as a warning to others. Plunging into the gap, shrieking like a lost soul. Percy, what are you talking about? The ghost train. Driver saw it last night. Where? asked Thomas and Toby. He didn't say. Oh, it makes my wheels wobble to think of it. Ha! Huh, said Thomas. You're just a silly little engine. I'm not scared. Thomas didn't believe in your ghost, said Percy next morning. His driver laughed. Neither do I. It was only a pretend ghost story. Percy was disappointed. That evening, he came back from the harbour. Percy knew where he was, even in the dark. Crows Farm Crossing. We shan't be long now. Like running at night, the rails hummed and the signal lights shone green. But a broken cartload of lime lay ahead. Sam the farmer had just gone for help. Percy broke the cart to smithereens. Lime flew everywhere. He puffed quickly to the nearest signal box. Percy's driver explained what had happened. I'll see to it, said the signalman, but you'd better clean Percy or people will think he's a ghost. Percy chuckled. Do let's pretend I'm a ghost and scare Thomas. That'll teach him to say I'm a silly little engine. Toby promised to help. <laughs> Thomas was being oiled up for his evening train. Percy's had an accident, cried Toby. Poor engine, said Thomas. Botheration! That means I'll be late. They've cleared the line for you, but there's something worse. Out with it, Toby. I can't wait all evening. I've just seen something, said Toby. It looked like Percy's ghost. It said it was, was coming here to, to, to warn us. Huh! Who cares? Don't be frightened, Toby. I'll take care of you. Beep, 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 beep. Let me in! Let me in! Wailed Percy. No, no, not by the smoke of my chimney, Jim, Jim. I'll chop and I'll puff and I'll break your door. Dear, exclaimed Thomas. It's getting late. Oh, I'd no idea. Oh, I must find Annie and Clarabel. It was morning when Thomas returned. Where have you been? asked Toby. Ah, well, said Thomas. I knew you'd be sad about Percy, and I, uh, I didn't like to intrude. I slept in the freight shed and... Sorry, can't stop. Got to see a coach about a train. <laughs> Percy was none the worse for his adventure and was still enjoying himself enormously. He had heard everything. Well, well, well. What do you know about that? Anyone would think, chuckled Toby, that our Thomas had just seen a ghost. Thomas was silly to imagine that Percy was really a ghost. Our imaginations usually fill up more at night than they do in the daytime, and Thomas has certainly did that night. Do you ever spend the night here, Mr. Conductor? 
When I'm not out traveling in far-off lands, I sleep in my bunk bed right inside the switch house. Do you sleep in your clothes? Goodness, no. I have a lovely pair of brand new pajamas that have choo-choo trains all over them. Which reminds me, I must take them out of the dryer. I really love them when they're still warm. I'll see you later. Hats off to you.